Yeah, I've been back in the gym long. for about four. Yeah. I, I started at 16. It was pretty hardcore until 32. And then I've been back in the gym four years now. So I don't know, 20 years of training, something like that. So yeah, this one, this this post here caught my eye. So I'm like, I got to ask Paul about this because Justin kind of, he'll always slip this in. I don't know if you ever heard him, but he'll slip in how everyone grows from this certain type of training besides Paul, he'll say. So the, <laughs> the old guy lifting training. Uh, uh, but no, I, I, I am curious just for those out there because uh, all kidding aside, like he would talk about progressive overload and then he would always on Team Troponin, he'd correct himself and say, well, but there is big Paul. Um, cause I believe, <laughs> I believe like, you, you know, can you share a little bit like, cause you're, you know, you've been relatively, uh, besides being getting sick, but like injury free and, and obviously on a pretty steady growth rate. And, uh, what, what type of training do you generally prescribe to for yourself? Well, in, in fairness, when I was in my twenties, I was a progressive overload guy. And I, right. you know, like I said, I trained with Dante Trudell for three, four years. So I, I did DC training for a period of time too. Um, I, I'm just like, I've had so many injuries. I've had multiple surgeries. I've had, I've got a torn labrum in my shoulder. Both of my, both of my ACLs have been torn. Um, and I just, I had to come up with a way to train that was sustainable going to, you know, I'm almost 50 years old and right. I, what I gravitated towards was, uh, really what I run is more of a Renaissance periodization style program. I don't know if you pay attention to Dr. Mike Israel at all. Um, but I read his, uh, book, I think it's called the principles of hypertrophy and it just sort of changed my mind on, on training in general, uh, fantastic book. And it really goes behind the science behind, behind it. And it really runs counter to everything that, uh, bodybuilders have, have done over the years, but really his, uh, his research and their theories is that, that, uh, um, volume is the primary driver of hypertrophy, not so much progressive overload. And there are other ways to progressive overload. You can progressive overload by uh, adding more volume. You can pro progressive overload by slowing your reps down and squeezing harder. I mean, there, there are right. different there are different things that you can do. But so I do a high volume style training. I don't do any compound movements. I don't squat. I don't deadlift. I don't do any bench presses. Yeah. Um, and I think that I think that blows people's minds um and that i don't do any any of that stuff and i really do not lift that heavy all, all my pressing movements like anything i would consider a compound type movement like like i'll do hammer strength presses for example for bench um i keep the rep range in 10 to 12 rep range and anything that's an isolation movement it's all 15 to 20 reps um and i really focus on blood flow um squeezing it's more it's more of a if I had to compare it to anything, it's more like a, a, a Jay Cutler style type of training. Um, but I do high volume, high frequency. So I do push pull legs and I train every day, essentially. And I don't yeah. do anything to failure. That's another thing that I do that just kind of blows people's bra brains wide open. They're like, like uh, I see Justin and David and, and Danny talk, you know, the, uh, uh, David blows me away with some of the weights he puts up. It's insane. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and, um, I, I lift like half what he, he does, <laughs> maybe less than half. I don't know, but I, you know, I do. I just really focus on form, getting a good squeeze, uh, getting a pump, um, and, and you know, and I, and I guess heavy is relative. I've been very strong in the past. You know, I, I, you know, I, I used to incline four hundred five, so it's not like I've been weak at, at right. You know, I've been strong before, but this is how I train now. Yeah, no, I was, I was just looking at a thing here, just for those who don't know who we're talking about here. I won't put Danny up there because I'll get embarrassed because she can, like, deadlift what I can do for a rep or two. She can do, like, for 10. I actually, what are these, 140s? David's 150s, lifting here? 150s, I think. 145 for eight, 150. Oh, 145. Oh, yeah. So yeah, only 145, you know? So uh, so pretty good pretty good weight there he's moving. Hey, what is this? Four, is this? Okay, that's only 405, so that's not you know <laughs> but nonetheless he's still moving his deadlifts are crazy and his hack squat too his hack squat's insane yeah no it's um and that's the thing i was gonna that's what i want to ask you about because like your legs grew quite a bit um and it's one thing i struggle with because i'm still that older school mindset even though i've looked into some research too like uh as far as like hypertrophy and the muscle response more more because i'm biased to that just trying to like I just injured my lower back like two years ago and um, I used to love, like I competed in powerlifting in my early twenties 
and uh you know that 150 for 10 again so yeah that's fun um so anyways um you know i, I was just curious like because you're, you're saying push pull legs so you do that tw- you do everything twice a week essentially in that routine yeah but i break it up so like my leg workouts i have a leg a and a leg b workout i kind of learned that from dante that's the way he used to break things out so my first leg workout will be more of a quad dominant workout yep. and my second workout will be adductors hamstrings glutes uh focused now there's still a little bit of glute um and um hamstring work in the other workout it's just that it's i do put more volume towards those body parts so so for example in the second workout i'll do i'll do hamstrings first and um and my glute work first and then i'll i'll hit hit uh, so i'll do adductors on the second day so i'll I'll do like a wide stand and also i noticed i gave up anything one, one of the things uh anything that loads my back one of the things that uh if you get into the Dr. Mike Israel tells research and, and the stuff that he talks about, he talks about fatigue to stimulus ratio. So, so if you think about it and I never really consider this in, it's something I, I, that's applied in, you've done martial arts. So in jujitsu, like one of the big things you, they talk about in jujitsu is energy management and saving, uh, you know, wearing an opponent out or just having enough gas in the tank to be able to keep going. And I thought about it when it comes to lifting, if you, like if your first set is squats and you go in and you blow yourself out on a set of, you know, like I used to be able to do 495 for like with 10 reps. Mm-hmm. If I blow myself out with 495 for 10 reps, what, how effective is the rest of my workout going to be? You know, right. I, am I, am I, you know, so I'm getting one really stimulating set in, and then the rest of my workout, I'm gassed and I'm not really doing anything. So, whereas if I leave, some reps in the tank and maybe do some stuff where my back is braced and I don't have so much systemic fatigue, um, from, you know, uh, uh, from having to brace with my back and, and support everything with my back. If I just focus on the quads themselves, like do hack squats or leg presses or leg extensions or lunges or something like that, that doesn't have, uh, the same, um, same cost fatigue cost that, that, that squats do and i can blow out more sets that way and i and i think it's paid off i think i've gotten more growth by doing that yeah usually uh like uh your typical three set or are you going up to five or like what's that kind of range does you look like for you um i do it by volume per week so i measure my volume and i do like a graduated volume program where i'll do six week blocks where i okay uh, and you'll see it in the Renaissance periodization programs where they all gradually push the volume up over a six week block. So you have your um, with the Renaissance programs, you'll have a maximum recoverable volume and a minimum um, effective volume. So you sort of work to work your way up from a minimum effective volume to a maximum recoverable volume. So for me, I found that somewhere like 10 sets per week per body part is sort of the minimum to like maintain and then uh, a maximum of somewhere between 20, depending on the body part, somewhere between 20 to 25 sets per week per body part working sets. Okay. So if we're talking about doing two workouts per week, if I'm at peak volume, I'm doing something like 10 to 12 sets per body part um, um, per session. So it works out to be 20 to 24. Four. Yeah. No, yeah. that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah i i have seen that uh that book around before i i don't i don't have that in my class i, I, I can't I recommend it enough it really it really changed my whole thought pro- thought process on training because it, it was just trying to find a way that traditional progressive overload you know hardcore let's go balls to the wall to failure type training just you know when when you get old and you get to my age your joints and connective tissue can't handle it and i and i compare it to playing a backyard football game you know you can get away with that shit when you're in your 20s right but i don't think you can train like that when you're 40 years old and sustain it i I just don't um and you look at the bodybuilders that have have lasted like a guy like kamal or or dexter jackson or something they all train like that i don't i don't go to failure either i always stop a rep or two short of failure yeah, I, I remember um that's very like the split itself is similar. I done I've done especially being a taller guy, like I've always done like a glute hamstring focus and then like a quad dominant day. Uh my quads just respond. It's it's more genetic because like I when I power lifted, I could I did I put up some decent numbers, but they were all with just, you know, on the front of my <laughs> on the front of my toes, like pressing through the floor. Like it was a, mainly quads moving the weight. So I you know, I wanted to develop that for functionality, but also um, 
you know, just look and whatnot. But but that that seemed to help a lot. But uh, no, I appreciate you breaking that down because I think that'll help a lot of people out there to wrap their their mind around like how to look at the full picture. You know, you'll have some pretty smart people that'll still just attack each workout as an individual segment versus working looking at it in blocks like you're talking about and how to progressively increase that. Um, so that I think that's that's pretty insightful. And now is that and something hey, the- new for your? Go ahead. Yeah, and that, you know, I have my clients doing that t- style of training too, and they seem to respond it well to it. And another thing to factor in there, and something that uh, people don't consider, and I've talked about this with Justin, and, and I don't, it, I don't know, I think the light light switch went on with him, um, and that uh, is something that people don't consider. And I think high volume and training like this pairs really well with the high carbohydrate diet, right? Um, and pairs really well with insulin, <laughs> just to be frank about it. Um, it matches up really well versus like with, with a, with a hit style training, which I don't think works as effectively with the high carbs and the, in the high. Um, uh, and also I think it keeps me leaner. I, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I don't do any cardio <laughs> all season, <laughs> but, but my, uh, my workouts are like cardio. I mean, so when, when I'm at peak volume, it takes me two hours to get through a workout. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, you got to put some thought into it and, and adjust, you know, from uh, what someone's body can do. But I, I definitely see, see it more and more. I know there's another researcher out there, uh, Dr. Andy Gaplin is his name. I'm not sure if you've mm-hmm. seen any of his content, yeah. but uh, he had some pretty interesting hypertrophy stuff. And I think it was, um, again, you, you know, I'd have to link it or um, – uh, steal the the actual content um, uh, without trying to hack it too much. I'm going off of memory, but I think it was eight to 30 reps. They shown, you know, it was like a, a growth range at a certain percent intensity. Like you're, you're going to grow from that. But I think it's also interesting when you were talking about um, back in the training world or like post rehab world, we would call it uh, tempo. And a lot of people don't think to change that where it's, you know, you're eccentric, you're isometric and concentric. Um, so if you're, you know, lowering the bar of speed, that pause how long you hold it for then how fast or what's mm-hmm. your intention to move the bar at a certain speed and i used to do a lot of that work with more general population but i've worked that into my programming where you know i might be using half the weight one day or I might be using a hell of a lot more or, or even looks like too much weight but i'm doing more my neuro you know my neuro drive like is my intention to move the bar at that speed is more important for that phase of training versus um uh, the actual speed of moving the bar. But I think tempo is a really big one. A lot of people under underestimate the the power of that. Yeah, this is more, I guess what I would say is more of a tempo style of workout. I, I definitely, there is, there is definitely tempo to it, like very controlled negatives, explosive on the positive. Um, you know, and I, I, I try to get full range of motion. That's another thing too. I think a lot of guys don't get full range of motion. Uh, and the weight's really relative at the end of the day. So I, and, and it's not to say that I don't try to progress weights. And this is what I tell my clients. I still am progressing weights, but within the parameters of the higher volume and, and keeping good form. So, you know, if I, you know, so if I can rip out five sets of, you know, I'm just using this as an example. If I can rip out yeah. five sets of 225 on bench for 10 reps and it's get, you know, that fifth set is easy. Then the next workout I'll go up to 235 or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're still progressing weights, but whereas like, if you were doing like my old style of training, like sort of the DC style of training was a couple workout, a couple warm up sets, and then just one balls out set, I might work up to four or five on the bench and have that one balls out set. So, you know, so, you know, you're still, when you look at the actual load that you're pl- placing on the muscle, it's probably more with the, with the lower weight. Uh, the stimulus that you're providing. So I don't know. And I think uh, sometimes people get confused whether they're power lifters or whether they're bodybuilders. So right. at, at, at the, there's really a, only a few variables you can control in, in lifting, you know, so you, you have, you, you have the load, you have you know, your, your rep tempo, range of motion, um, volume, you know, so those are really the, really the main variables that you can control. So I don't know. I, I, I just have found that this, this works a lot better for me. And I, it seems to be working with my clients. I noticed people have a fuller look in, paired with the carbohydrates and a little bit of insulin. Yeah. I think, um, uh, uh it's important, as you mentioned, like for people to really clearly identify like what their goals are from their training. You know, I was, we did a, a an episode with John Heck, who's the, uh, strength coach for. Yeah. 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 Who, I'm familiar with him. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, he's obviously training for strongman. 
but with his athletes, you know, he talked about um, back in when I was in high school and, and early college, like all the athletes were all about the Olympic lifts and everyone had to power clean and blah, blah, blah. If you're going to play, you know, D1 football and this and that. And he was saying how like that, that's completely, you know, out of the, uh, out of their weight room because of how complex the movement is and how much time they would just waste trying to teach technique to do that. He's like, it's not a necessarily a bad movement. There's just so many other ways to break that movement down into like sub exercise, you know, sub uh, exercises or lifts, if you will. Um, that's more, that's more transferable so they can get more volume and get more work in. But you know, if it, if it was like a, you know, someone like an Olympic lifter, like it's, you know, they're going to, they would argue that, you know, uh, till they're blue in the face and like, no, we've got to do this. So similar to bodybuilding, right? Like your goal is hypertrophy. You're trying to grow the muscle. So even if a guy's next right. to you on stage, but he can bench more than you, like who, who cares? That's not what you're being judged on that day. So yeah, I had, I had one of my clients who was uh, that was telling me he's like, uh, you know, I could, you know, in his last contest prep, he looked like shit. I, I saw I saw his pictures, and he was telling me he could still bench four or five uh, going into peak week. And I'm like, did they ask you how much you bench when you got on stage? I'm like, nobody gives a fuck, man. It's what you look like, right? So, I mean, it, it's training specificity. You know, you it, you wouldn't if you if you trained like a soccer player to go play football, you wouldn't be very good at football. So I don't right. know. And I, and I see it in the gym a lot of times. I see guys that say they're bodybuilders, but they're not sure if they're a power lifter or if they're doing CrossFit or if they're doing bodybuilding. So I, I just, I don't know. And I do think you need to build a, a, a base of strength. I, I like, like really young lifters, like guys that are brand new. I probably do have them more on a progressive overload style program. Uh, I think once you have that base of strength and then there's also just another thing to think too, is like somebody like that's the size of a pro bodybuilder. You get so fucking strong that going to failure on 225 on the bench is way different than going to uh, failure on 405 on the bench. The, the, the energy ex, uh, expense and then the uh, risk of injury goes way up. Right. Yeah. So, I of- mean, those are, those are other variables you got to control for and think about too. So, I mean, it's, it's gets to the point where it's dangerous and if you get hurt, you can't train. If you can't train, you're not going to grow. Right. No, it's interesting. You mentioned like the younger guys too, because it's, uh, I know like I've worked with, um, some swimmers, uh, recently, just some of the strength conditioning kind of volunteer work I did. And they all, because in my town, it's a powerhouse football town. So they all wanted to train like the football players. And it's just like, you know, uh, or, or like, you know, what the perceived way bodybuilders train, like a lot of pressing and things like that. And it's like, guys, like you are using such different muscles and certain ones are so overdeveloped that like, we have to actually do the opposite. We had to do like more, you know, the, the, the weak non-dominant muscles be from 10 years of swimming. Like we had to strengthen those to support their strong muscles and then still layer that into their program so that they were seeing that, you know, that, that term, like absolute strength, like absolute strength is transferable in sports, but how do we maximize it? You know, if you're, yep. if you're synergistic uh, or your antagonist muscles, excuse me, are, are just, you know, uh, so tight cause they're weak. Well then you're so restricted on those prime movers. So it just helps to kind of balance the two out. So, you no, know, it's, it's funny just to, stuff. Just observing how people train in the gym. When I look at at, at groups, the bodybuilders are the ones that train most like idiots. <laughs> I like it's <laughs> it's it's funny because like you see power lifters, they have a very specific style of training. Like like they, uh, we have some world class power lifters in my gym. I mean they're 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 programmed out. They know what their training block is looking like. They know what percentage of their lifts are doing this week. They have you know it is very specific for their goal at the meet. And the same thing with the Olympic guys, you watch the Olympic guys there, they have very specific training for their sport and then bodybuilders are just doing whatever the fuck. Right. Right. <laughs> like it just, like some of them are training like powerlifters. Some of them are doing Olympic lifts. I mean, some of them are training like CrossFit. They just, they're just all over the fucking place. Yeah. Got Got to have the plan. Actually, I know I'm looking forward to, uh, I know we were talking before we, we started recording here, but yeah, I know Justin, I, and a couple of us, I know John, uh john revis is not too far from you so it'll be nice at some point here to make make our rounds and try to get out to your gym with you that'd be that'd be really cool so it'd be great to i don't know yeah, how much justin a... will lift with us but it'll be good to good to get in the mix <laughs> uh, you'll be disappointed when you see me lift uh <laughs> i oh, have good. a I have a re- i have a really cool gym though it's the gym where i'm at here in the dc area it's uh there's tons of pro bodybuilders and pro li- powerlifters 
a uh, guy that works out here occasionally just set the world record on um, a raw deadlift, a deadlift oh, nice. at like 1,080, something wow. like that. He's just a kid, too. He's like 24. Wow. Um, well, that's, and, that's why we bring John Rivas with us because Justin and I are not <laughs> – we're not doing anything impressive anymore. So bring uh, Danny or, or, or John. And uh, we'll be, we'll be I fine. mean, Danny right? probably lifts more than me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, she was at Elite FTS and uh, – uh, I saw a clip and you could just see Justin was doing warm up sets with her. Then he all of a sudden sits down the rest of it. And I'm like, yeah, the, I, he's like, no, I think I'm good. And I'm like, yeah, she's repping 405 on deadlifts. And I'm like, you know, it's <laughs> pretty solid, man. But um, no, I know we're, we're getting closer to time here. But uh, one thing I did want to ask you about, because I talked to David, Danny, Justin, and John, and we, we all busted your chops without you knowing about your cheat meals. So we said they're, they're, not, <laughs> they're, not, they're not dirty enough. So, uh, so no, I, I am curious. So what is your approach with your clients for cheat meals? I know, I know yours are, uh, are definitely on the cleaner side of a cheat generally. And from what I've seen on Instagram from you, but what, what do you usually do with you know, your clients? Uh, is, it, is it related to how the, where their starting point is? Or, or what are your parameters? Like, how do you approach that? Well, my cheat meals haven't been too clean lately. <laughs> okay. All right. That makes us feel better. That makes us all feel better. I, usually, like, I'll just, like, do some hamburger helper with some fattier hamburger in it or something like that. <laughs> I'm so lazy. Uh, uh, lately, I've been getting double Whoppers. That's been my go-to. I don't get the fries, though. I just get I just get a plain double Whopper. So, I guess it's not that bad, right? <laughs> well, now know. it's out there on the internet now, man. Everyone's going to be like, oh, I don't know. So, I've been on, I've been on a double whopper kick lately, man. That's been my cheat meal. Uh, with my clients, I just I um I, I I program in a cheat meal and I just tell them don't don't go ape shit with it. There, there's right. a dirty cheat and then there's a, a a cleanish cheat. Like you know something like I tell them to stay away from shit like pizza and desserts and like if you go out and hammer a whole pizza and eat a dozen donuts, that's not productive. Uh, right. Ha- having a steak and a potato or or having a hamburger and french fries or some sushi or something like that is what i would consider consider a productive cheat so something with a a a base of uh meat in it with with some carbohydrates maybe a little extra fat i mean that's kind of what i tell people to do for cheat meals that's typically what i do i mean my go-to last year was texas roadhouse i have it right next to my house i would just go there and get a steak and a potato there you go yeah no it's uh it's something that there was a little bit early on and i know when i prepped was uh a little bit like the taste bud but gen- then it just turned into well i'm trying to fill out so like what is the thing that i could eat the most of you know so i just try to keep very low fat on my cheat meal but just as like more higher carbohydrate or like a 50 50 as far as like a sugary or, or carb and just try to like fill out because i knew the next week i was just you know as i progressed like i knew i'm gonna get blown out like i'm gonna be flat as hell come you know wednesday or thursday and my my cheat with and my leg day was on saturdays was my high day usually so um so yeah i just I'll I, be, tried, I tweaked it i'll be honest justin is a goddamn genius because at the end of the high day i don't i don't i'm not even that hungry man I don't, like half the time i don't even want the fucking cheat meal i'm yep. so full yep like after yep. after hammering down a thousand grams of carbs the last thing i want to do is go eat more well, what is your what is your current rotation look like right now? Because you're in the off season, you said you're pretty lean. You're in, you know two seventies. Like what uh, what does the the week look like for you now? Uh, I think he's got me on a thousand grams of carbs on my high day right now. Um, Six hundred on my medium and three let's see three sixty on my low day uh, for carbs. And we're doing three high days a week right now. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so you're you're still pushing. Yeah. Yeah. I, and how I, long is that trouble. looking? I've been having trouble gaining weight. I don't know what the deal is. It just like it just doesn't want to come on. I've been stuck. So I and don't do, know. Do you know uh, what? Do you have anything in mind as far as when, how much longer the off season is going to be for you, and when you start kind of working towards prep? <sighs> well, I was going to do Masters Nationals in July, but I don't know that I'm going to do it now because my daughter made this travel volleyball team, and I'm going to be fucking traveling like every weekend. Okay. From January until till July, so I don't know how feasible it is to do contest prep when I'm on the road all the fucking time. Yeah. So so volleyball comes first. I I may do uh, what is it the um, NPC Nationals um, that just happened last week. I think that's right, isn't it? Nationals. Yeah. I, I can't keep all these shows straight. Is it North Americans? Maybe or is that maybe it is North Americans? But the my the guys at my gym produce shows, and I think they produce that one. So okay. Um, I may I may do and. 
I've never done a late show, so I may do that. I'm going to do a national show next, whatever, whatever happens. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you were what, like low 230s, uh, 235, 233, something like that? Or I was 237 on stage oh, last year. I, I stand corrected. High 230s. So, yeah, you're look. Uh, is that kind of the goal? Probably cracking into the 250s this time around? Yeah. J- Justin wanted me to get closer to 250 to be, uh, and probably to be on a national stage. Um, even in the master's class, I, that's probably what I, where I need to be. I would imagine at my, cause I'm just a hair under six, two. Yeah. I would, no, good deal. I would, I would imagine that's where I need to be there. Some of the master's guys are pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's big, it's big, you know, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're knocking on the door of that. So you're, like you said, you're pretty lean. You're in the, you know, two seventies like upper two seventies so it's uh health health withstanding we'll we'll see you know as long as my health holds up yeah well as we kind of wind down here uh wanted to just so one of the things we try to capture in any of any of the our episodes is just any you know quick tips for people uh that are out there so wondering like the first one you know if you what is something maybe you would say to uh a client or someone who's just trying to get started trying to get motivated if you think back to like when you first started going back to the gym again maybe what older guy or girl who's just trying to make another run at a little later in life like what would be some of your advice there i mean the biggest thing i tell young guys and it seems to be like when they transform is to learn how to eat i mean that that more than even the lifting like the diet to me seems to be the most important part everybody gets hung up on peds everybody gets hung up on training and none of it works if you're not if you don't have the diet buttoned up but i I would say focusing on learning how to eat to eat like a bodybuilder is is the single biggest thing the the kid i showed you earlier or the one the one that you were jason um that that's the only thing we changed was his diet yeah that's it that's it and he he's he's natural yeah and that that that's got him eating like a bodybuilder and he's 18 years old and that that's what happened so that's the biggest thing i can say for a young young person learn how to eat when it comes to the lifting you know i focus on getting your form buttoned up um i i I see so many people that lift like assholes i know justin's not big on form um i can tell from the way he lives (laughs) it's pretty ugly (laughs) Trust me, man. I used to get pissed because, like, he had these big round shoulders, and being a taller guy, like, I always wanted to build up my my rear delts and the roundness. And he's just, he would just like do this. And I'm like, what? No, like, what are you doing? <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> there, there's some people that get big despite of it, man. It, I, it, 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 I mean, if, if you got the diet button up, honestly, I, I don't know the the training. Uh, you know, there is some importance to training. I'd say the big reason the big reason why I say fo- you get your form tight is because if you want to last. Right, you can get away with stuff. The guys that lift with shit form always end up getting hurt <laughs> later down the road, and it's just not sustainable once you get past a past a certain point. You can't lift like that in your fifties. Well, not to mention, like for me, like when I was squatting, I mentioned my lower back before. It really hindered my my like either my leg growth or my back growth because of my uh, on my leg day. If I was using too much back, then it was so blown out. By the time I tried to do some back thickness type movements i just couldn't recruit it it was just fried you know so it's just yeah you know to your point like good good form technique and some of that starts with mobility like what do you you know are you doing the right warm-ups are you assessing you know which muscles are more dominant than others to kind of loosen them up and things like that but um yeah what, what about when a client gets stuck um you know if they're if they're not progressing or they cheated you know a little too much or whatever the case is they're kind of they're kind of in that that self-shaming mindset how do, do you are you the type of coach to pull them out of it or is it just kind of what well, how do you approach that if that it, it's funny out? i just did a video i posted on monday on the bodybuilding mindset how, how to how to uh, the proper mindset uh, you just got to get back in the saddle and right. this is what i tell people you you got to stay medium and not get too high not get too low don't get too worked up about shit if you fuck everybody fucks up Right. Just get back, just get back in the saddle and keep going. I, I think a lot of people get that ah fuck it mentality where if right. they 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 mess up, they're just like I'm off the bed, ba- I'm off the wagon now. Let's just eat a whole a whole fucking thing of donuts and pizza and just fuck it. I'm not doing the diet anymore. Just if you fuck up a meal, just get back on track on the next meal. I mean, no. it's really just that simple. Same thing. If you miss a workout, just go to the gym tomorrow. Yep, go to the next uh, thing. But it's a great advice because, like, you know, it doesn't mean Friday night you screwed up. So then all of a sudden, I'll do it again Monday. Like, this isn't a three day just sl- you know slide here. Like, it's one reload, get back at it. You know, so I, I get I get it. I see it all the time. I have people that have the off fucking mentality. I have a guy like, yeah, I screwed up 
Thursday and then I was off the wagon all weekend. I'm like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> you can't do that. I know. It's it's frustrating. Well, I don't know about you, but as far as me when I was coaching, I, I would just like copy and paste what they were supposed to do the last two weeks. Cause I'm like, I don't know what to have you do. Cause I don't know. Yeah, that's what I tell them. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, if you don't comply with the diet, I can't make any changes. So right. you're the, uh, the more accurate you are with your measurement and with the diet, the more food you get to eat. <laughs> Otherwise right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you more food. Right. Yeah, I know it's, it's interesting, but well, good stuff. Uh, anything else kind of on the horizon? Any uh, any fun content out there uh, uh, you have planned? I know I know a lot of people really follow you and, and look for – you always have really engaging stuff. Anything kind of on the horizon for you that you're looking to cover or excited about? Or I'll be honest, man. I just pull it out of my ass week to week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's working, right? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I just, I, just try to, I just try to be me and see, people seem to like me for some reason. I, I do my – uh, one thing I think that it surprises me how it, people find this interesting, but I try to keep uh, at least every other week I'll post a uh, off season vlog up where I go through my diet, my training, my my PEDs, uh, my supplements, all that stuff. I put that up uh, usually on Saturdays. I'll put it up on my channel, and people find that interesting for whatever reason. Um, I think it's pretty boring, but uh, you know I think people like to see some some insight on how how the process works. So that that um seems to keep people interested and then usually I'll, during the week i'll put something topical up you know whatever's going on in the bodybuilding world and then i try to do something informational usually every week is sort of my rotation like either something uh, about a chemical compound or training or or diet so that's no, that's totally sort good. of my rotation well selfishly i want you to i want you to crack open that book now so i can you know you can save me a few pages of reading and i can just listen to you talk about it so <laughs> <laughs> you know dr mike he did a, like an entire like dissertation on the whole fucking book on his youtube channel he's got a playlist where he goes through each chapter okay. chapter by chapter it's 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 so good he, he he's if you don't follow him follow dr mike is real yep. tell he's 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 the best no i'll i'll uh, i'll definitely be doing that but and uh, he's funny <laughs> I, I was going to, I was going to ask you, this is, uh, you know, I know this is the one, the one D channel here. So we, we, we try not to plug our stuff, but uh, how is some of the, the new, did you try recently the uh, WTF? How, how's that working out for you? Well, that's what I'm buzzing on right now, man. That's why I'm, <laughs> why I'm talking so much. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. I usually don't use pre-workouts. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a big pre work because I work out like late Yeah, and I can't go to sleep, but uh, I, um, actually the stem part of it wasn't, it's not too over, uh, it's not, it's not too overstimulating, but I got really, really good pumps out of it the other night when I, when I use it, um, wh whatever you guys put in it for the pump agents are really good. Yeah. I think, you know, what I felt and I, 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 it could be a combination, um, uh, the citrulline and the sodium. Um, I seem to, I seem to feel that a little bit more cause I, you know, before I was, uh, with these products, you know, I, I, I would just use a little bit different, but, but I'm with you. Like, I don't like stim, but, um, and who knows, maybe we make a non stim in the future, but that L theanine in there, I love L theanine. I use it for actually for sleep, but that seems to really help, um, me at least stay more like focused and more like, even I don't get that jittery and kind of like, you know, yeah, I didn't get jittery. Or... Yeah. I think focus would be a good, good description. I, and of course I use the intro, um, I've, I've been using that for a while and, and then Justin told me I wiped him out with the QRF. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling everybody about QRF. I, I, I'm sorry about that. But... Yeah, no, we got, we got another batch in product and, uh, in process. So it'll be, it'll be uh, it's, a, a it's, out. It, no joke, man. It's insane. Um, I came out of contest prep after running halo testing and my, uh, <laughs> my, uh, uh, liver or my ALT and AST were both like in the low thirties. Yeah, no, I mean it's uh, like you said, you kind of posted about it, and we've we've been seeing some uh, some different people comment and you know tag us on some of the results and stuff. So so it's all it's all good. But I did want to um, pull this up really quick before we let you go here. So I know you're you're been super busy with coaching, so you might you might hate me for this, but uh, but but Paul does have a pretty just for those of you out there. Not only is his YouTube channel awesome, his Instagram's great. Definitely be sure to follow him. Um, but this has been you know growing since I've known you. So he's got obviously you can see some of his transformation here and that's, that's not Photoshop. That's, that is big Paul. Um, and that's not even, that's not even this year. That's last year. I was bigger this year. Yeah. No, yeah, you're gonna have to update the, the images soon. 
but you can kind of go through and check out all his uh all his information here and then a lot of a lot of really great content so and you have a membership now right is that is that what you have set up or is that uh, i'm working on it okay um if i ever get time to work on it but yeah i'm going to put some pre-canned programs together like a bulk program and a uh cutting program just to kind of you know for people who don't want to do coaching but i do coaching and consultation calls so if people want to just kind of have me go through their diet and protocol and and um and uh training you know like if if they don't want to do a full coaching full thing they can do that yeah yeah and i have my, my training anybody that's interested in my training program it's i have it on the website for free you can download it it's under oh, the cool. free stuff oh nice nice yeah was that uh, also, is that under the coaching section or i uh, know it's just where you were go back oh, and it's oh. it's there if you go slide down free stuff ah there you go free stuff uh, i might have to Let's hit this up after. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I didn't know that was on there. So you got some ebooks and stuff and good deal. Yeah, I put a PED selection chart. So you know what each one of them kind of at a high level, what they do with the risk ratio is on them. And I have a, uh, I went through the DC training. I kind of outlined my experience with DC training for people that are interested in DC training. Nice. Uh, I do. I do have a, a video coming up uh, with an interview with, um, um, a guy um, that the Dusty Hanshaw's training partner, Tommy, um, I can't remember his last name off the top of my head, but uh, all about DC trainings. People seem to love DC training. So that'll be up soon. Oh, cool. We're definitely gonna have to check that out. We'll definitely uh, uh, post it on some of our platforms as well. So uh, for all you out there, all the listeners out there are looking forward to that. Yeah. I've, I've got some DC training videos up on my website too. I, I did it, you know, four or five years. Right. Um, Good stuff. Well, as always, Big Paul, thank you so much, sir, for uh, joining the the channel today. Like I said, we'll uh, my bum co-host Justin Harris stood us up, so we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll we'll reel him in. Maybe we'll, we'll definitely bring you back. Uh, yeah, anytime you, know, next, you guys want me on, a couple months or so, we'll kind of kind of see how things are going. But uh, for all you out there, just that friendly reminder, all that fun YouTube stuff, subscribe, notifications, and comments. And thanks again uh, for listening in. We'll see you. All right, take care. Boom, 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 bo